Good morning, everybody. I'm Tim Berglund, the chair of the House Energy and Technology Committee. It is Friday, May 21st. Uh, it is our 1030-ish hearing. We actually hadn't posted this hearing um, with a much advance notice. And um, I think the floor is going to be um, in and out today as we work on um, kind of final budget things and and um, some uh, a few final bills that we've got to get done. Um, I wanted uh, the opportunity for our community uh, for our committee to to meet what, what's probably going to be the last time for this uh, session. Um, and actually, just to talk about a few different things, um, primarily uh, some of the artificial intelligence um, things that we've looked at in recent months. I think we started taking testimony on those two bills and just the the issue generally, um, probably late March. So we um, looked at that over the course of maybe a half dozen um, hearings or so. And I know that there's interest on um, several members of our committee to do some work on that legislatively. And um, my ambition is that we, we do do work on that in January. And I'm hopeful that we will be able to pass a bill in January. Um, in recent weeks, I have been having uh, kind of off camera conversations with Representative Sims and Representative Rogers just about this topic generally. Um, and they have been very helpful in finding people to come testify and scheduling things. Um, and we've had some uh, I think we had one conversation uh, informally with a couple of folks at ADS. This was probably back in April now, but it was just helpful in, in helping me um, put together some of the discussion we've had in committee. Um, and actually, uh, I sent members an email at about 20 after 10 this morning, and um, I included in there a half dozen questions, again, that were just meant to prompt conversation. And I don't expect us to have a real deep conversation on uh, this topic this morning, but um, I know that Representative Sims and Representative Rogers are interested uh, in doing some work on this topic in the off session. And I think it would be helpful to give a little feedback. Um, we don't have to stick to these questions, um, but you know, th this is, these are kind of high level prompts for the conversation. And what I would also say is, um, there is no pride of authorship here. I, I know that, um, that, that Lucy and Catherine uh, are eager and happy to work with any committee members who wanna work on this topic in the off session. So um, I intend to stay in touch with them here and there just to hear what they're working on, um, working our way towards a piece of legislation that our committee can react to in January. But I would encourage any and all committee members who would like to do some more work on this to to touch base with Catherine and Lucy, because I know, as I said, they're interested in, in um, pushing this forward uh, in, in our off session. So um, one of the things that I want to uh, have us have spend our time on today is, it, I, and I've got a few other things as well, um, but I don't want to let the session end without thinking about some of these things. So um, since this is a public hearing, I'm going to read some of these questions because uh, they haven't been posted to our website, but um, there were two bills that uh, are on our wall right now, H-263, which more deals with the artificial intelligence inventory, H-410, which is more focused on setting up an artificial intelligence commission that would work um, to guide state government on policies and um, issues related to artificial intelligence. Um, and as I said, I'd sent members some uh, some questions. Um, should we be working toward one bill or keeping these two bills separate? Um, that's something that has come up occasionally in, in recent weeks and months in our committee. Um, a second question was AD, ADS had suggested including flexibility in creating the inventory to account for unexpectedly difficult tasks um, and or withholding information that causes a security concern to disclose. H-263 was very specific on inventory requirements. How, how prescriptive do we want to be in that bill? Um, and then a third question was, ADS suggested keeping the inventory as a nuts and bolts presentation of where we are now, moving the pieces that have to do with ethical judgment making, uh, uh, making over to the committee's jurisdiction. I'm not sure if that was very quick, but um, committee's thoughts on that and do we generally agree? Um, a fourth question, what's the vision for the inventory going forward? Should 
um, this be something that we add a request for feedback from ADS on whether and how frequently it should be updated? Um, where should the AI Commission be housed? ACCD, ADS, somewhere else? You might recall that the commission, the task force that we'd set up a few years ago, I believe was housed in ACCD. Um, and then finally, are there any other comments on the makeup or duties of the commission? Um, economic development as part of the commission's charge. That was something that we heard some testimony on that there is a burgeoning industry in the state of Vermont that deals um, in these areas. So again, those were meant to be prompts more than anything. Not, you know, we don't have to stick to those particular questions, but um, uh, I'd, I'd be interested in feedback, particularly um, as we think about these issues in the off session. So uh, Laura. Great. Uh, I would love to see us, um, I'd love to see us kind of go, go big um, with one bill. Um, uh, we can always break it apart if we need to. Um, the other thing that I would just like to encourage us to think about as we're doing this um, is we're going to learn a lot. Um, uh, I think we're learning that, you know, there's not a lot of there aren't a lot of paths to follow in consideration of either of these. Um, and so I would, I don't, I, you know, I'm kind of torn. I don't know if we actually want to keep it as specific, the inventory um, as we have it to kind of see what comes out of the woodwork in reaction to that. Or, uh, you know, if we want to go, if we want to go broad, I, I guess my inc inclination might be to be more specific and just see you know, what is the shape of interest in this discussion? I mean, I, I don't even feel like we have a good grasp on that. Like what is, who's gonna be interested in this? Um, yeah. So, uh, and then I don't, I don't really know where this AI commission should be housed, you know, in, in I don't think it's ADA. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't so I just, I, I, I will mention something. Um, and uh, I would ask Catherine and uh, Lucy to make sure my memory is correct here. Um, as I said, we'd had kind of an off camera and on camera. Um, we had ADS in here a couple of weeks ago to talk about this issue, um, but got an email from, um, I think it was from Mark at ADS. Um, but basically saying that, you know, my sense was that they are ready and willing to go on, on an inventory and um, that they have, you know, some very, it, this sounds doable was the feedback I was getting from him. I mean, a concern that I had a month ago was, oof, what kind of can of worms are we opening here? Is this going to even be able to be accomplished? And I thought we got some very positive feedback from him via an email saying, we can do this. Um, you know, I think the direction would be helpful, but it's, yeah, yeah. And throughout other agencies. Yeah, you know, and, and I worry less about um, economic development being part of the commission's charge and more about um, understanding, you know, um, just understanding more about the effects on society and what it is that we should be watching for and, and regulating. I think that this, um, this is gonna continue to evolve and um, you know, entrepreneurs are gonna continue to, um, to develop uh, AI you know, without, without our assistance. You know, I, I mean, I think, so, so I'm less concerned in terms of economic development, good to know how our, how our businesses are using it, but you know, I, I feel like this is a public, um, a, a public, uh, public safety, public privacy, um, uh, issue yeah. largely. So yeah. I think that's all I have to say right now. Okay. But, but I will bookmark on that last point you made. Um, I think we've acknowledged at different points in this discussion in recent months that uh, exactly that point, that quite possibly this bill in these issues, they dip into the Commerce Committee, they dip into the um, Judiciary Committee, and, and there may be others as well that we want to keep, keep on the radar. 
Um, Representative Yantachka. Yes, um, I'll piggyback on top of Laura's comment, especially the last one. Uh, I think Adam sent around uh, a link to, or at least a reference to the 60 Minutes program uh, last Sunday, where uh, they were talking about a facial recognition system and how it, uh, because of reliance solely on the computer, uh, I wound up identifying uh, people incorrectly and they're, they're getting arrested and held and everything else, even though they had nothing to do with the particular crime. Um, so one thing uh, that I would like to see is an emphasis uh, when we do an inventory of the state systems. Um, what, what systems are we using that rely solely on uh, computer output to make a decision that uh, materially affects people? Um, and ensure that we always have human review of that particular decision. So whether it's facial recognition, whether it's determination of somebody getting benefits or anything else, I, I, think, I think it's necessary to include um, a human element in there to review the output and make sure that, um, you know, whatever the computer decided isn't a glitch. Um, the other thing uh, is, I think we should, I think the, the commission should be tasked with creating ethical guidelines for commercial AI development. And uh, I don't think we can go much further than that because we don't really have control over private enterprise. And, uh, I'm not sure how much how much farther we could actually exert influence on that, but I think we should definitely state where we think the ethical limits are. And, and I would say on that last point, Mike, I, I can't remember who the witness was, but it, I had never thought of regulation this way. But I I thought it was an interesting context, um, and this witness had had mentioned that. Um, one of the precursors to regulation and government action is oftentimes kind of setting these ethical guidelines and frameworks for how to think about this stuff. And in the future that it might, might evolve into some more direct um, government action. But uh, that was something that was an interesting um, concept as to what the work of the commission uh, might shape if we set up a commission that, you know, sets up some of the some ethical guidelines. So, I think uh, Lucy have, and then Catherine. Uh, I was I was going to say if if you don't oh, mind, I'm sorry. I'm thinking a little bit further. Um, if we have the ethical guidelines, I don't think I don't think government interference wouldn't necessarily be required unless we see a violation of those guidelines that uh, is serious enough for us to react to it. So. Uh, in that case, you know, we, we see we see that happening in terms of uh, um, use of force in police departments and things like that. We react to 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 uh, violations of what we think is proper, uh, and it set up new new restrictions as a result. Yep. Uh, Lucy and then Catherine. Um, yeah, I pretty much agree with everything uh, Laura and Mike's comments. And I, I particularly, I've been kind of thinking about the economic development piece a little bit, and it might be nice to get a little, some some feedback from the Commerce and Economic Development Committee, because I do feel strongly that that's not at least my area of expertise, but wondering if at this point, it's not quite the right time to be thinking about that side of things and um, maybe kind of watching as things develop whether there's a role for us later on. But you know, at this point in time, it seems like kind of this train is coming, whether we encourage it or not. So that was just that was just a thought. And then I, I I'm leaning, I've been putting quite a bit of thought into where the commission should live. Um, and at this point, I'm leaning towards agency of digital services if they'll if they'll have it. And I think I might have said this before, but the reason for me is you know, in talking with agency and digital, of digital services about what it is and is not appropriate for them to be doing with the, um, 
with the AI inventory and you know, hearing loud and clear from them, we can tell you the technology we have, we are not set up and don't have the training or expertise to make any ethical um, decisions here. I think for me that really, that I was, I was appreciative of them kind of just laying that out. But to me that kind of emphasized that it could be really positive to have the commission housed at ADS because I think it would be good to have the people who understand the technology and the people who have the expertise in understanding the ethics of the technology together in one place. So I guess those are the kind of reflections I've been having. Catherine? Thanks, appreciating this this conversation and agree with much of, of what is said and that um, the sort of first focus of the commission can be setting this ethical guidelines framework and then that probably you know might lead to future policy work um one one of the other things the commission is asked to do is to produce reports on educational opportunities and business growth opportunities i was also wondering um whether we might want to consider adding to that list of a future of work issues i think we've heard from a number of our witnesses about how work is changing um and i appreciated um uh, the owner of Faraday's sort of call that we not just be the horse and buggy um, folks saying like all, all change is bad, um, but sort of embrace that this is change that is happening and that, you know, probably not having folks have to sit on tolls, you know, to take change and, you know, using automation for that is a really good thing, but how do we help train and create future um you know, high quality work opportunities for folks. So I'd, I'd love to, um, you know, maybe think about how the commission is as strategic as possible in, in the reports that it um, produces. And um, again, sort of agree that the focus should be on those ethical guidelines. That said, I'm, I'm wondering whether there are some additional actions we might want the commission to take immediately um, one of them I'm thinking about is procurement policies. And again, I don't know whether that lives within ADS, although I think I heard ADS saying, we're happy to sort of host this, but we wanna be maybe informed and guided by a commission that has broader expertise and perspective on this work. And so wonder whether we might wanna think about the commission um, helping inform a set of procurement policies for the state for when it, um, you know, chooses to procure a software that has AI technology. Um, and maybe one last thing that I would add, I'm curious whether um, there might be an immediate um, legislative piece around um, transparency of when AI systems are used and whether that's something that could be within the purview of state government is that we sort of, um, require that when decisions and maybe it's only for the kind of high stakes algorithms around liberty finances and livelihood but you know when an ai uh, decision making system automated decision making system is making a decision based on someone's livelihood you know should we consider kind of really in the short term requiring at least some transparency around that so yeah. just thoughts i wanted to share yeah no that's a good one and i, and I heard some of that in um in Mike's comments as well, <clears throat> that you know that, that that there needs to be a threshold. Um, in addition to policies, there needs to be a threshold when people's livelihoods, um, when when people's kind of personal well-being is being uh, is being affected uh, by these things. So, okay, great. Well, that's helpful to me. I've been taking notes here on people's thoughts. Um, so again, my. Um, I, you know, Lucy and Catherine have reached out to me with great interest in working on this in the off session. And, um, you know, maybe we'll touch base a few times um, just, to, you know, to kind of continue this conversation. And I would welcome and encourage members who are interested in also kind of doing a deep dive on this to reach out to them um, to, you know, kind of coordinate some work on this. So, um, so thank you for that. It, this was helpful for me just kind of in bringing my, um, kind of centering me on this and kind of thinking about what's got to be done. And again, I've, I've told you my ambitions as committee chair, which is I would like to pass a piece of legislation on this in January, um, because I would like to see the, 
the Judiciary Committee and the Commerce Committee um, perhaps take a peek at this. And, um, and, and one other thing that I think hadn't been flagged, but I want to flag is the potential for, um, you know, if we do a commission, you know, there probably ought to be a modest appropriation to support that work. And so ultimately, this um, may potentially wind up in the Appropriations Committee, which is another re reason I would like to kind of accelerate this work to get in the front of the line, uh, so to speak, as the Appropriations Committee starts their work in late, uh, late January on the budget. Um, uh, Catherine, is your hand still up from before? Yeah, okay, uh, Mike and then Laura. Yeah, I'm interested in um, what kind of work during the summer uh, Lucy and Catherine might be undertaking. Uh, might, I might be interested. Okay. Well, then, as I said, I would encourage you to reach out to them. Um, uh, Laura and then Sally. Uh, I'm also interested, but I queued in, uh, Mr. Chair, on the judiciary and commerce um, aspects of your comments. And I'm wondering if we have um, talked with anyone on those committees, um, just to maybe have them kind of toggle along on the yeah. summer fall uh, as folks are thinking about that. So you, you know what I will do on our committee's behalf and whatever, we're, I will reach out to the chairs of those committees. So I will reach out to um, Maxine Grad and to, um, uh, to, to Mike and see, you know, as those things have crossed their committees, Plates. I don't know if AI ever wound up any place in, well, it must have, but this, if the task force was an ACCD a few years ago, I'm guessing that there was someone in that committee who may yeah. have looked under the hood. So let, let me reach out, um, let me reach out to them. And uh, if, if there are members who have a particular interest, I'll, I'll come back to you all. So that, that's a great suggestion. Um, Sally? My comment is also just that I would be interested um, in looking what the tasks are and everything. So Lucy and Catherine, put my name down. Awesome. Um, okay, I'm making a, yep. a note. Um, it's not even a to-do list. It's like a to-do binder that I have going here. Um, <laughs> my God, Mr. Chair, you need some time <laughs> off this summer. <laughs> It's been a long year and a half. Oh, goodness. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for that um, discussion. Uh, you know, a couple other things that um, that I wanted to mention to Mike, is your hand up from before? Or? Uh, it is, but I want to I want to make one more comment. And that's okay, if, please go ahead. Please if go we ahead. are planning, to, if a number of us are planning to get together, we've got to worry about uh, uh, a quorum of our committee. And uh, we wouldn't want to have five people meeting uh, without some public notice. Um, let me also reach out to the speaker on that and see what. And we could like meet in groups of two. <laughs> right. Could do that. Could, subcommittees. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. I think it's a, uh, an important concern. Um, but let me ask, let me ask about that. Um, I, I would say, Mr. Chair, that my interest is in kind of keeping along with the education aspect. So, you know, as there are things that are being read or, or things to kind of keep along with that. Well, and that, that's another possible angle that, you know, this work group could, could do is, is maybe each um, particular meeting is focusing on a particular topic that maybe one or two folks don't you know, are less interested in and wouldn't wouldn't join that conversation. But so that that might be another way to handle it. Let, let me just check in with the speaker on that. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you in the, in the off session in previous years, I don't know if, yeah, I've definitely met with large groups of legislators to talk about a particular piece of legislation. And I, I can't recall if there were issues around quorum things there, but <clears throat> um, anyway. Um, so I, I'm going to say that that is going to end our kind of formal policy stuff for today. I did want to take a few minutes as a committee. Um, and again, acknowledging this is probably the last time we're going to meet this session. Uh, and I know Matthew's camera is not on, but to express a heartfelt thank you to Matthew for the work you've done to kind of keep us um, in gear. 
And, you know, in, in some ways, I feel bad that we haven't had the opportunity to, and, and this actually goes for Sally and Catherine as, as well as new members of the legislature, but, but um, importantly for Matthew, that we haven't had an opportunity to sit in the same room and work together. And I feel like the, the job of committee assistant that Matthew has had to do, he has had to kind of make up as he's gone along. There was no playbook as to how to do this. And um, so just in so many ways, and um, you know, I've probably worked more closely with Matthew than anybody on the committee, just in terms of you know, getting uh, all the organizational things around the committee done. And Matthew, you have done an extraordinary job. I am so appreciative um, of the work you've done, just kind of keeping our committee on the rails, so to speak. Um, and, you know, one of the, um, you know, there are a handful of committee assistants who have been in the legislature, probably, I don't know if it's for decades, but for a long time. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's a career path that people consider. Um, it's pretty hard to make a living on five months a year work, but somehow I'm hopeful uh, if the opportunity avails itself that you'll be back with us next year um, because you've done awesome work. And I'm hopeful we're gonna be working in person um, and that we'll be able to get a chance to sit in the same room with you. Now, and hopefully it's not that room, but um, <laughs> at any rate, I just, again, wanted to formally uh, and publicly thank you for incredible work this year. So. Um, yes, yay. On a, uh, on a less formal note, I, I, I wasn't sure I was going to bring this up, but um, Laura and Avram and I, as we were um, waiting in a Zoom room, I can't even remember when it was, Monday or Tuesday night this week <clears throat> on the conference committee, I, I made a note and I mentioned to them, there's something I've got to bring up to the committee. Um, and it's a little... It's a little inside joke that my family has been playing this year. And um, I'll just share it with you now. So um, my, my, I have two teenage boys who are, you know, have really odd senses of humor. And um, we were talking last fall after we had adjourned and they'd watched some of the YouTube video and they were like, dad, you look like you're a hostage. You, you look like you're being held hostage, you know, kind of doing these committee Zoom things. and. And we got laughing about that. And we were talking about when there's a hostage video, um, what, you know, what the hostage does to kind of signal to the people in the public that, you know, that they're being held hostage and that anything they're saying is not actually to be taken seriously. And what we came down to and there, they also laugh about how, how badly I dress, but the dare of me wearing the exact same tie and jacket and shirt every day of the session, which I'm hopeful today is the last day, which I have actually accomplished. If you'll go back and look, that I have worn the exact same tie and jacket. Actually, I have a couple of different white shirts, so this is not the exact same shirt. But the other part of that bet that came up was um, then acknowledging how ridiculous I looked in the same thing every day. Will anyone actually bring it up that, Dad, you are wearing the exact same tie and jacket every... And I said, no, nobody's going to, people are too polite. And they're like, are you kidding me? People have got to call out. <laughs> so nobody's done it. Nobody's called out that I've worn the exact same tie. <laughs> well, you just had a very specific order. <laughs> yeah, I thought yes. there were rules that we had to uh, do this. <laughs> if you were a G, you know, what do I know I'm new? <laughs> So, so at any rate, the, 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 the cat is out of the bag. You don't have to raise your hand, Mike. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I got to admit that I've relegated myself only a couple of shirts. Uh, and, but usually it's the same tie. And uh, one thing I told my wife also made the comment, uh, she'd be wearing the same thing every day. I said, you know, I don't know. I don't think guys notice what people are wearing. But women might. And I don't know whether they'd make a comment, but I certainly wouldn't notice what other people are wearing every day. <laughs> well, I also, I will chime in and say, I absolutely did not notice, but would have fully endorsed it had I noticed. And yeah, I think I excitedly anticipate the time in our society when women can also do that and have nobody notice. 
Exactly. Not exactly. at all. A, <laughs> I don't know. I just greatly look forward to that. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, I had I'm to glad. share that. I, 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 I almost broke that out with, with Avram and, and with Laura the other night, but I was like, yeah, I'm going to share this with the, with the committee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the other thing is actually... being let out of his confinement today. Exactly. I, I thought you got rid of most of your hostage look uh, with the with the beard shave. I mean, you know, the beard oh. was really, that was amazing. That was spectacular, truly. Yeah, that yeah. was hostage like worthy. I've, yeah, I've still got some <laughs> of those pictures. So, Catherine and Sally, maybe you haven't seen those. I had a beard kind of down to my, you know, it was down here. It was not pretty. It was um, it was awesome. So the, the the other thing that I want to share with committee, more on a serious note, um, although semi-serious, but the, the sentiment is serious, which is um, uh, the, the, I don't even know how many there are. I think there's 14 uh, chairs meet every week. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of a policy discussion. It's kind of a, um, it's kind of a kvetch session. It's kind of a planning session. Um, but, you know, also people talk about, you know, challenges that they have working in committee. And, um, in two senses, in, in one sense, I would say that conversation has been foreign to me. And, and in one sense, it's actually been a great conversation. And what's been kind of foreign is hearing, it's not a lot, but some committee chairs talk about challenges that they have in kind of working with their committee and how great this committee has been to work with. And it's not that we, um, you know, always agree on things, but I think it's been an incredibly respectful committee. I think it's been a committee that asks really good questions. People kind of show up ready to do work. And it's just been a great committee to work with. And that's my kind of subjective um, view on that. I will also say objectively, um, feedback that I've gotten from either people who testify in our committee or other chairs um, or other members of the legislature who come and share things with our committees, how impressed people are with our committee. And um, that personally makes me feel good. Um, but I think you all should feel good as well, that people look at this committee and think that's a committee that does good work, that is prepared, that is respectful. I like going and testifying there. Um, and, uh, and I think we do do good work. And so I just want to share that um, great feedback that I've gotten and, and share it with you. I think it's, um, you know, it's something we should all uh, be proud of so, and keep up the good work. So I wanted to share that publicly with you. Uh, anyway, thank you. Yeah, no, I'll just say that <clears throat> that I'm looking forward to uh, getting together at Catherine's uh, in June uh, because I think it'll be great just for all of us to get together in person. Really missing that. <laughs> yeah, Me yeah. Too. I'm I am so hopeful we can get together next year. And and if we do, one of the things that um, I'm getting a sense for is that if we do meet in person, um, uh, there's no way they're going to let us meet in a small committee room as we have. So we might have that to, might have that to look forward to. So anyway, yeah, I just saw, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, really looking forward to hosting everyone. Um, it's been such a strange situation to join the legislature in this year and have most of the interaction be, you know, through, through the, the Zoom tile. So really looking forward to having you all. I'll send directions and more details um, probably next week. Give a little bit of time to unplug, but looking forward yeah. to seeing you all. I'm, and I'm looking forward to that too. Maybe I'll just put in a plug. I sent this out by email to the All House, but <clears throat> really inspired by um, I think Commissioner Snyder's testimony in our committee for Rygate around um, the forest economy and the challenges it faces. Um, Red Wing Caucus had him in to talk a little bit more depth with the caucus about some of the issues and um, a group of folks from Red Wing um, wanted to do more learning this summer. And so if any of you all um, are interested in uh, meeting in person at cool sites across Vermont this summer and learning more about the issues of the forest economy, um, let me know if you haven't already. And I, I will say as an aside on that, um... <clears throat> there are a couple of folks, uh, one legis one senator and um, two folks in the private um, kind of private sector who are trying to schedule, uh, we're trying to schedule me as chair of this committee for a, a, um, a visit to the Rygate plant, which I've never been to. 
And if the opportunity arises, um, I'd be happy to, um, you know, to extend that invitation to people who would be interested in seeing that. So, okay. Well, I will send that around if, if that's something that, that we're able to do. Um, but that was going to be sometime this summer. I think so, I mentioned that as a uh, suggestion for the uh, Rural Economic Development Co uh, group, oh. Working Group okay. to to, as well. So uh, since it seems like we're winding down, uh, you know, I just want to, on behalf of the committee, um, I think there's probably unanimous consensus. Uh, thank you, Tim, your leadership um, and guidance uh, and sense of humor uh, and poker face are really... Um, <laughs> They are extraordinary. Uh, and for uh, Catherine and Sally, I mean, truly, you are lucky to have uh, had Tim be your first chair. And uh, and uh, thank you, Tim. Yeah, well, thank you for that. It's, this is a great group of people to work with. So looking forward wanna, to 20. I want to publicly say something, too, because obviously being new and then at the very beginning, everybody would say, well, usually we do, but not this year because it's going to be different. So I had no idea what to expect. And I feel so fortunate to have been assigned to this committee where, as you said, Mr. Chair, we don't always agree, but we've been able to talk respectfully and come up with a solution. And uh, I'm just... As I said, I feel very fortunate to have been assigned to work with you all. Thank you, Sally. That's great to hear. Um, so that's all I've got for this morning. Um, and this, as I said, this is probably the last time we're going to meet. So um, hope to, you know, for folks who can make it to, to Catherine's um, in a few weeks, look forward to seeing you there. Um, I have a couple things I'm going to check in uh, and probably email folks on in terms of, um, you know, with the speaker in terms of how folks might be able to or not be able to work um, over the summer on some things. And I'll get back to you on that. And um, that's it. Have a happy summer. <laughs>